My name is Paul Bollinger. I've been a wood carver since 1980. I've carved different things as you'll see in this video. And most recently in 2019 and 2020, I ended up carving the great sea monster cask. But the question for this video is where did the inspiration come from for the great sea monster cask? Why sea monsters? Why that format? It's an interesting question. I had to explore it myself, and this video is the result of that exploration. Somewhere along the way in my carving career, I learned to carve in the round. And then I became fascinated with Father Christmas. And so I learned to carve Father Christmas figures, and Camille learned to paint them. And in fact, she developed a painting method using artist's oil paint on the wood that gave them a distinctive old world antique look. We became very well known for these Father Christmas carvings and I always loved them and I still do them. But I wanted to try something else at some point and so I moved onward. When we moved to our new home in Virginia, we had a wine cellar at it and I wanted some distinctive carvings for that wine cellar and so I got some wine barrels, took the top portions off, top and bottom, and learned to carve. These are two examples of carving and painting of what I would call standard wine barrels. Little did I know that within a few years I would be carving wine casks 10 or 15 times this size. After carving the wine barrels for a while, I found a wine cask on the internet, a large oval cask that would have held hundreds of gallons of wine. It was located in Bad Durkheim, Germany. It had been built between 1900 and 1920. I bought it on the internet and I had it shipped here to Haymarket, Virginia. I took it apart and I kept the two ends that I wanted. On one end I carved the God Bless This Wine that you see here, inspired by the Fetchen House in Taos. And on the other side, I carved the Weinstrasse, inspired by Germany, the Weinstrasse in Germany, the city crests, our trip to Germany some years ago, and the fact that I was a child in grade school in Germany when my father was in the army. And so that was my first foray into large format carving. The question still exists of why a sea monster cask? Well, I served six years in the Navy and while I was in there, I did see some interesting things at sea. I didn't see any sea monsters, but there were other things I saw. And mostly I gained an appreciation of the sea and how large it was and how mysterious it could be and how wondrous it was in the great expanses of the ocean. And so there it was. What could be out there? Could there be monsters? Could there be Ultima Thule? Could there be things we hadn't yet discovered? I'm certainly sure there are. This is a picture of the USS Strong DD-758. This is the ship I was on when I made a tour of the Mediterranean, including a trip into the Black Sea, through the Bosphorus, through the middle of downtown Istanbul, into the Russian backyard, it was not a large ship, but by standards of the year 1539 or 325 BC, it was a giant ship and it was fast. Too fast to really observe things that were on the surface of the water or in the water. From a ship like the USS Strong, you really can't see much. You're very high above the water and you're moving too fast to have time to observe. But from a small vessel, being moved by the wind, subject to the currents of the sea, not much shelter, you would be right at sea level. For most of the history of seafaring, this is the way people traveled in small vessels, close to the shore for safety and for ability to navigate. And so part of the inspiration for this cask about sea monsters were early Greek tales of their seafaring adventures, what they saw, what they did, 
what it was like to be at sea. In those ancient early days, the Greeks believed that their gods went to the end of the earth, as far north as you could go, the land beyond the north wind, Hyperborea, the land where the Hyperboreans lived. The Greek poet Pindar told that you would never really be able to find it, as much as you search for that marvelous place and those marvelous people, they would never be found. And the Greeks envisioned a land at the top of the earth, a land we know today doesn't exist, but they didn't know that, and so they searched for it. Around 325 BC, a Greek, Pythias, from what is now Marseille, went on an adventure to find the land at the top of the earth. In the process, he circumnavigated all of Britain, including Ireland, and the seas around them, and the islands in those seas. It was a historic voyage, if you can imagine 325 BC, in a small vessel going across that part of the world. He made the first recorded descriptions of polar bears, sea ice, and the land of the midnight sun. He came home and told of those things, and frankly, people didn't believe him. And so Pythias, venturing on the sea, circumnavigating Britain, what would he have seen from the small boat? This is a boat from around 300 BC, it would be similar to what he traveled in. He would have seen the Orkney Islands, he would have seen the Shetland Islands, the Faroe Islands, maybe as far as Iceland, the Inner and Outer Hebrides, Ireland, and all the things that are offered in those seas. He says he went to a place called Thule, Ultima Thule, the farthest north place in the world and that there in that place is where the Arctic Circle demarcated the rest of the world from that part. And the barbarians, the locals there, showed Pythias the place where the sun goes to rest. And he found the land of the midnight sun and came home and told those tales. And as we already know, people didn't believe him. From such a small boat as they traveled in in those times, the sea would be very close, right by you. You would see all manner of things floating on the surface, maybe even just below the surface. You could observe as the water went slowly by, and maybe on calm days, hardly moved at all. If a whale went by, you could likely smell its breath as it exhaled. You might see a narwhal and mistake it for a unicorn. All kinds of mysterious things could pop up in the water. Things that might be clear or things that you might not be able to see so clearly. Or that when you went to remember them months later might look different because you were scared at the time, uncertain of what you were looking at, far from home in a tiny boat on a dangerous sea. We all know the story of Christopher Columbus in 1492, came across the Atlantic, found a new continent. Those ships we think of as small, but they were far larger than the ones used by the early Greeks. But they are small, and they're slow. And the sea would have still been a mysterious and frightening place, even to sailors at the time of Columbus. Olus Magnus, born in 1490, two years before Columbus came to the Americas. He died in 1557. He was a cleric in Sweden, actually a bishop in the Catholic Church. But it was a time in Sweden during the Reformation and people were abandoning the church and he was losing his congregation. His king at the time was Gustav I of Sweden. Olaus Magnus was sent to Rome to work on a project to make a map and tell the story of the Scandinavian lands. The Pope, Pope Paul III, commissioned him to make the famous map, now famous map. He called it the Carta Marina. It was a map of the marine waters and the Scandinavian lands. 
It took nine wood blocks, printed three, three, and three in rows, to make the map. In 1539, the map was printed, some copies were made, and then soon afterward, the map disappeared. There were no copies. It was lost for more than 300 years. And then in 1886, a copy was found in a museum in Munich and the map was available again once more to the world. And this is the map. You can see Scandinavia, you can see the islands that Pythias navigated through, the Orkneys, Faroe, Shetland, even Ultima Thule is on this map even though it doesn't really exist. And so this is a map of the Scandinavian lands and the islands north of Great Britain, all the way to Iceland. The monsters on here, we're not really sure why they're here. Some people believe that the cartographers put them on as a way to fill dead space and to make some more money. But there are those that actually believe that the monsters are on there to scare away fishermen who are not familiar with the waters, who are not from Scandinavia. So it's not clear why those monsters are on there. I tend to believe that they're on there to scare people away. Sometime after the project was begun, a book was discovered that related to the maps of that period, medieval and Renaissance maps, dealing with sea monsters. It was a common theme on maps to find sea monsters. And so this book was about other maps that existed before and after the 1539 Olaus Magnus map, the Carta Marina of the Scandinavian waters. Back in those days, it was common for people to believe that for every creature on land, there was a corresponding creature in the sea. Mermaids, mermen, sea dogs, sea pigs, sea cows, sea elephants. It's not surprising then that they could believe in sea monsters. And then, even farther along in the project, another book was discovered. This book was specifically about the Olaus Magnus map of 1539. The title was A Voyage Around the World's Most Beguiling Map. The monsters were documented, detailed, and discussed in the book. One of the monsters was devouring a stricken vessel, crushing the crew and eating them. Definitely a frightening situation. And now let's take a look at the map itself. An overlay of the islands north of Great Britain helps us remember Pythias and going to the land of the midnight sun. And these islands are on the Carta Marina. And here's a little ship for us to sail in. Actually, it's not so little and it's from that same period. If you look around on the map, you can see representations of sailing ships from 1500, 1539, when the map was made. Now let's take a little voyage in our ship. We're going to go up past the Orkney Islands. We're going to cruise on up past the Faroe Islands, almost to Iceland as we pass by monsters. Then we're going to go in the opposite direction, up to the northeast. We pass ice flows, we come upon more monsters, and then we descend back towards where we started, past monsters, past the Shetland Islands, and back to where we began. That's a voyage on the Carta Marina. Here's a quick trip around the map using the magnifying glass. A few things may have caught your eye as we cruised around the map. The Shetland Islands, here called Hetlandia. Not far away, the Faroe Islands. 
On the Faroe Islands, we see a bagpiper. Seems to be piping, while others are cutting up what's portrayed as a whale. The Orkney Islands are shown with vessels going in between the islands, and they are a collection of small islands. Iceland, you can see the volcanoes, the flames coming up out of the ground. You can see the ice flow. Think about Pythias and seeing ice in the water for the first time, trying to navigate through the ice flows. You can't really help but let your eye wander over the land itself and see interesting things. This looks like a group of elk or possibly reindeer, but I think elk battling wolves. Here's some sort of armored wagon being pulled by what I would think are reindeer with an archer in the back defending the load, whatever valuables are in that wagon. And then here on the ice, horses and maybe a reindeer pulling sleds. Are they just traveling? Are they having a good time? You can see that someone's standing in the back with the reins all the way out. All of these little tiny things. And so these were all inspirations for making the Sea Monster cask. A big cask with lots and lots of small things on it, telling a story like that Olaus Magnus Carta Marina from 1539. The islands, the islands of their lives. Washington State, you can see the Cascade Mountains, Seattle, the Columbia River, grapes, famous Washington State apples, the wheat fields around Pullman, Washington, Spokane where the couple lived, an orca in Puget Sound, and then Bigfoot over on the Olympic coast. Pennsylvania where Paul was born and where he went to college at Penn State. You can see the Nittany Lion, coal, mountains, the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia. A monster called a squonk lives in the woods of Pennsylvania. You can see Pittsburgh as a fort, Fort Pitt. And then again, a Bigfoot. Virginia, the Civil War, Monticello, wine country tobacco, the great naval base at Norfolk, Monticello, a monster, country music way out on the border with Tennessee, and a Bigfoot. California, where the couple lived for 26 years. In the north, Mount Shasta. UFOs are seen at Mount Shasta all the time. The spotted owl, the great north woods. A gold miner panning for gold, grapes, Sacramento, the great earthquake faults of the southern part of the state, the wine industry, Los Angeles with its palm trees, and a medal, the Joint Service Commendation Medal that Paul was awarded while working in Los Angeles. Wales, the great red Welsh dragon castles, a male fist, the crown, and then some gravestones to remember the ancestors. Japan, Mount Fuji, a stone lantern, and Vietnam, a Buddha, a water buffalo, a Vietnamese peasant, and the Vietnam Service Medal that Paul was awarded for his time on the Mekong River. Those are the islands, and those are what you see on the islands on the great sea monster cask. But it's called the sea monster cask, and so we definitely need to take a look at the sea monsters and see them on the cask. Let's take a look at the ones that are on the map and where they ended up on the cask, and then maybe a few that are on the cask that were not on the map.
And at the bottom of the Great Sea Monster Cask, you see Ultima Thule, the island that doesn't really exist. Brigadoon, a place of mystery. And there it is, at the bottom of the Great Sea Monster Cask, right above the initials of the two artists responsible for this piece of art. Ultima Thule, the mysterious island. Remember the farthest place, a mythological island north of Britain, beyond Hyperborea. So that's the great sea monster cask. That's the inspiration for the cask. That's the result of the cask. From, from 300 BC to 1539 to 2019 and 2020, an idea becomes reality. A piece of art is made in Haymarket, Virginia.